So we'll start with the CSS today. First 15 minutes is the CSS. So uh, okay. Yeah. So just now listen it, and whenever you have a doubt, then ask it. Otherwise, you listen what I'm saying. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. So maybe you mute yourself. How many person? How, how yeah. many person they have today? Uh, it's two persons. Okay, two me and another uh, another student. Yeah, yes, is a I'm Carrie. Carrie. Yeah, yeah, she's Carrie. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now two students are there. Though one more person has paid it, but he didn't come yesterday. Also, he didn't came. Today, also, he didn't came. So maybe he come on Monday. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so right now mute yourself, and when you have questions, just unmute it and ask it. Otherwise, I will speak and you just listen to it. Okay. Oh, Jim, we were eight. Okay. okay. Can I ask you, do you need the video on or no video? It's do I okay. have the video? No, it's a, it's a, not. Uh, it's optional. You know, I will also hide it. Uh, it. Sometimes it does not like it. People don't like it. It's okay. No need for video. Oh, it's good when you're on, when you have it because I. It's good I when I have. At the same time. <laughs> okay, I will turn on my video. Whoever likes to uh, make it on, they can make it on. Otherwise, it's optional. I will make it on so that you can see me. Okay, so we'll start with the CSS thing. Let's start with the CSS one. I know CSS is very basic. Everybody knows the CSS. So we will be doing uh, some CSS, we will be doing little basics and then we will go to more advanced CSS. So let's start, uh, I, I will create a folder and that folder is called day one, today is day one. Yesterday we didn't start it because uh, only one student was there, so I did not start it. So this is the today's day one. So let's start with the CSS, one.html. So make sure you take the notes when I'm speaking. I will also be sharing the video of uh, every day what I teach. Uh, this video, you have to watch it again if you have any difficulty, but you should also take the notes while I explain it. And try to understand what I am teaching. Don't try to do at the same time when I'm teaching it because otherwise you will not see what I'm showing you. But after the lecture is completed, you can go back to the video or go back to your notes and try to repeat what everything, whatever I taught you. So have you started download, Kate? Those uh, two software. Uh, yes, already uh, started. Installing, uh, okay. Installing. Okay, okay. So, okay, we'll start by the time, and uh, in the, after 30 minutes, I need those two softwares. Hey, Manny, yeah. do I need to? I downloaded the Dreamweaver, but do I need to download the ApacheFriends.org? You should download, uh, you know, you should download anything like uh, WAMP, BAMP, or anything. It's okay. not necessary Apache one. Yeah, whatever you have, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Bunny, one second. Bunny. Okay, so let's start the CSS thing, which I want to show you today. So uh, here, if you see, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so top part is kind of a design part. Top part is called design part and bottom part is called the uh, coding part. This is a dream weaver. So we are using two sections in the top part. I can directly, I can directly write some code as if, as if I'm writing in the HTML or word as if I'm writing in the word programming and below will be the code generated from what I'm writing. So for example, I will write in the top section, for example, main page. So here is the design view and here I can see that in the code view it is same thing is repeated here again. So let's type some paragraphs. I know everyone knows about the paragraph. So there, 
again i will be typing the paragraph so this is paragraph and i will type more tags this is for example heading 1 and i will type one some more tags div tag this is div tag so now i will try to give the css to my html html tags so uh so there are number of ways to give the css to these tags so we will see one of the way today and other ways we will see maybe tomorrow or some other day so i will be showing you some one method of putting the style sheet in the page i can create the style tag and i can say type equal to text css and inside this style tag i will write my css part now today what we are going to learn in the css we are going to discuss about selectors in the css now what are the selectors selectors means i want to give css to particular tag or i want to give css to particular id every element can have id also so this is uh, i say para 1 id of this paragraph is para 1 i can say id of this div is div1 and every tag can also have the class so i can give the class of something maybe i can say para1 class and i can give the class to this one as para2 class or a div class div1 class so i can assign class to any tag or i can assign id to any tag and this is a tag this is h1 tag this is p tag this is div tag and each tag has id or class or both and sometimes it does not have anything like this i don't have any class also i don't have any id also it's better to give the class to all the tags so that we can give the style sheet to each and every uh, tag so i can give let's say heading 2 i can give the class so class is must you should give class to every tag id is not must id can be only given if you want to manipulate it through javascript or if you want to uh, you know use the css to the id then you can give ids otherwise class is sufficient and i recommend you to give class to every tag so i can say heading 1 now how can i give the style sheet to each tag or each class or each id so either i can say if i want to give the style sheet to the tags for example h1 tag or p tag directly i will write p tag and i will start the curly bracket and here i will give some css properties so what are the css properties we will see in detail later so right now i will give you simple property i will give simple property so that you can understand it so let's give some properties to the p tag so for example i can say color equal to red so as soon as i say color equal to red you will see paragraph is turned to the red color and this is the paragraph and i assign the color to this paragraph see here is a paragraph tag and i am using p tag in the css so both should match if i want to give if i want to give css to this div tag i can use similar way i can say div and i can give some color for example blue color to the div tag as soon as i finish it you will see the blue color is assigned to the div tag so what i did i assigned directly blue color to this div tag but in my web page there can be many div tags and i don't want to give blue color to all the div tags that is the reason we generally don't that is the reason we don't uh, we don't give the style sheet to the div tag or p tag 
because on my page there can be hundred of tags hundred of p tags hundreds of div tags and i don't want to give color blue to all the div tags if i want to give color to all the blue tag all the div tags then it is better to create the div uh, selector in the css and assign the blue color to that div but since we don't want to give blue color to all the div tags we will use class or id to give the css properties so let's delete this tag p tag and div tag and try to use class and id so how to use the class so if i want to give any css property to this class for example heading 1 class then i will start with the dot and i will give the heading 1 or whatever the name of the class is for example heading 1 and if i want to give any css to this class that is the heading 2 i can say dot heading 2 and i will start with the curly bracket so initially we saw we can give the css to the p tag or we can give the css to the div tag similar way we can give the css to the class by putting the dot sign in front of it and if i want to give the css to the ids then i can put hash sign uh, and we, i can put the name of the id and then i can give the css properties to this div which div this div because i am giving the css <coughs> css properties to this div so that means if i want to give any css properties to the class i will start with dot notation if i want to give css to the ids i can use hash notation if i want to give the css to the tag then i don't put dot or hash i can directly put the h1 tag or h2 tag or any tag so i can say h2 tag or h3 tag and i can start the curly bracket so this these are the three ways where we can select the element in the css there are more other ways where we can select the css element which we will see in the next lecture so let's give some class to the heading 1 i can say color of green so heading 1 will become green color so let's give some different properties to the heading 2 i can say color of red so this heading 2 will become red and now wherever we want to give the color red i can give this class to that tag and that will become the red color so for example if i want to give red color to this div tag also so instead of div1 class or in addition to div1 class i can pass heading 2 also if i am pass heading 2 you will see the heading 2 property that is the color red is assigned to this div tag so this is about the three ways of selecting the css and html tags so this one was the basics of today's css lecture So I will type something what we did today. CSS what we did did selector. Selectors are of many types. These are the three important ways to select the HTML tag and give the CSS properties. So what is the first way? Assigning the CSS properties to tags. That is p tag or div tag or h1 tag or any tag. second method is assigning css properties css properties to classes so to assign the css property to the classes we use dot sign so i can say dot heading 1 or dot heading 2 or dot div 1 something like that and third method is assigning css properties to ids that is div by using hash sign hash div1 or hash para1 so these three things are very important in css and we will be seeing more properties more ways to attach the css properties later on later on maybe in the next lecture maybe in uh, monday or tuesday we will see more css selectors right now for today i will paste this thing in the chat so that if you want you can copy paste it
So this one was about today's CSS class. Every day you will see 15 minutes of CSS, 15 minutes of JavaScript, so that you should have a knowledge of complete web development, not like only front end or only back end. So we will be doing front end and back end together in this class, and each will be of the 15 uh, 15 minutes. Ye bani ko de, ye bani ko de, bani ko de. Okay, have you, do you have any question about CSS? What we did today? No questions no. for me. No. no. Okay. So this one was about CSS. We will finish the CSS part. Now we'll move to the JavaScript part. Okay. So let's start the JavaScript part. Okay, let's start the JavaScript thing now. So let me save it and I'll close it. And now I will start with JavaScript. So JavaScript is the most important subject in the web development. And if you go for the job in the front end or back end, JavaScript is very important. And you should thoroughly know the JavaScript. We will be doing a lot of problems in the JavaScript. We'll be doing a lot of things in the JavaScript. And so you should pay attention in the JavaScript class. We will be doing a lot of data structures in the JavaScript. We will be doing a lot of coding in the JavaScript. And this coding is very practical, which is helpful in the interview questions. So most of the interview will be from this questions only, which we will do in our class. So I, I, I know you may be knowing JavaScript uh, you may be knowing the JavaScript, but I will be then teaching the JavaScript, which I want to teach. So it may be some topics you will feel is a very basic one, and some will be a little advanced. So we will start with the JavaScript kind of thing. So I will say, okay, I will open the web browser and I will start there. Okay, so we can open the command line. Uh, we can open the uh this bottom console part and we can write the javascript here and we can learn the javascript here so first thing which we will do is let's say if i want to let's say if i want to give some message to the user so how will i give the message to user i can say alert if i say alert so the window will pop and it will say hi. So whatever I put in the alert, you will see here in the, as a pop-up box and you can show that alert to the user. I can say alert, hello world. So if I enter it, you will see a pop-up box is open and hello world is displayed here. So what are the other ways of doing the, displaying the things to the user? So if you are developing the code, most of the time you will be watching this console.log and this console.log is very important in JavaScript development. So for example, I can say console.log, hello world. So you will see hello world is displayed here in the console. So whenever you want to debug your application, you will use console.log and you will see what is are displayed in the console panel. Alert is generally used to give the information to the user that, oh, you did something wrong or error happened in your page. But console.log is something happened when you want, you are doing development and you want to, you want to debug your application or you want to see something is going on your application, you want to test it, so you put the console.log. So these two things are very important in uh, JavaScript. We'll move further. If I want to confirm whether I want to continue or I want to cancel the things, I will use the confirm. So I can say var, let's say check is equal to confirm. If I say confirm, that means I want to confirm whether he wants to proceed or he don't want to proceed. So if user clicks OK button, that means he wants to proceed. And if user clicks cancel button, that means he don't want to proceed. So I can say confirm and round bracket, single quote, and I can ask a question. Do you want to continue? 
and once I press enter, you will see a pop-up is displayed and the question is asked, do you want to continue? I can say cancel or okay. So I will write this again, cake, cake equal to confirm, do you want to continue? And here, if I can console the value of the cake, user selected cake. So if I press enter, the pop-up will open and it will ask, do you want to continue? And if I say, if I say, okay, then in the console.log, I will see user selected as a one. And if I say cancel it, that means in the console.log, I will say user selected as a false kind of thing. So one is true and another is false. So let's try to see what happens now in this case. I press enter, it's asking me, do you want to continue? If I press okay, you will say user selected equal to true. I will do it again and we'll see what happened. Now I will click cancel and it will say false. So it's saying, do you want to continue? I say cancel. Once I say cancel, once I say cancel, you will see user selected equal to false. So this way I can ask something from the user and expect that he wants to say yes or no. If he clicks okay, that I will I will proceed it. And if he say cancel, I will say I will not proceed it. So this is generally practically used in uh, whenever you know we have delete button and we want to ask we want to ask whether a user wants to delete something or whether user wants to delete something or not so we can generally use confirm so i have used confirm in my most of the applications and i i generally say i generally say uh, you know delete button i give the delete button and once user clicks the delete button i generally delete the record or if he cancels the button i uh, don't delete the record so this is practically used in those cases so one thing we saw is alert second we saw is the console.log console.log and then we saw the confirm and fifth thing which is very important in basics of the javascript is the prompt so if i say prompt what is your name then i can put in the text field my name and we can use that in my programming so for example, I can say var name is equal to prompt, what is your name? And then I will console.log whatever user has chosen it. Your name is name. So this is the variable I created it. If you don't know variable, we will learn it shortly in some time. Just now remember that whatever user has typed in the text box will be saved in this variable name. And then I can display that variable here. So if I enter it, you will see a text box appear and this question comes, what is your name? If I say my name is Manny and click OK, you will see in the console.log, your name is Manny. So this way I can take anything from the user and I can display it on the, uh, I can manipulate it in the JavaScript. So generally this is used, let's say if I want to take 10 numbers from the user, number one, number two, number three, number four. So I can prompt 10 times, enter number one, enter number two, enter number three, enter number four. Like this, I can take five or 10 elements and then I can, then I can manipulate with those elements. And then, uh, so this is prompt is used for that purpose. So maybe, maybe these th three, all things you might have learned it already, but I just showed you because I will be going into deep diving into the JavaScript and I want you to understand these things. Now we'll do a little bit of variables. What are the variables and what are the types of variables in JavaScript? So whenever I want to write JavaScript in the web application, I will put it in the script tag. So I have to start with the script tag and end with the script tag. Anything in between the script tag will be the JavaScript. So whatever I want to put in the JavaScript, I will put in the script tag. 
a script tag generally comes in the head head region or we can also put the script tag in the body tag so either a script tag goes into the body or it goes into the head section of the uh, html page and inside the script tag i can write anything i can say alert i for example and i will split it so uh one second let me see okay so when i say alert hi so i am getting it hi here so now we will see some of the variables which we can use in the javascript so for example i can use the number as a numeric number case i can say x1 is the name of the variable always we start variable with the var var is the keyword which we use in the javascript and whenever we want to create a variable we will start with the var and i give the name of the variable and i can put anything in it so for example i can put numeric value for example 10 i will create another variable called as x2 and i can put a numeric value called as 3 another variable i can create as x3 whatever name i want to give in the variable i can give and i can assign the value so in these two cases i have assigned the numeric values <coughs> let's try to give some other types of values so we can also give as a float or decimal number so i can say 1.5 and every javascript should end with the semicolon it's not necessary in the javascript but it is better to you end the all the script with the semicolon if you don't put semicolon it will not give error but it will run it javascript is very peaceful they will run it without semicolon also but if you go to php you cannot run if you don't have semicolon in the end so if i say x3 equal to 1.5 so what is this value this is called decimal values so either i can give the numeric i can give the decimal values I can also give name as Parik. So here I am giving as a string value. I can also give the Boolean value called as let's say x4 is equal to true. Or I can say var x5 is equal to false. And I can also give some null value so for example x6 is equal to null so that means it is created variable is created but it has uh, no value in it or i can just create a var variable without giving any value so it's just a variable is initialized but we are not giving value now but we will give the value later on in our application so i can also do console dot log of each variable for example i can say x1 is x1 so i'm doing console.log and i'm putting something string and it will show the value of 10. let me put another one console.log of x2 is x2 so it will display what it will display 3. if i say console.log of x3 is x3 so what it will do it will display 1.5 if i say console.log of name it will display parik if i say console.log of x4 it will display true if i say console.log of x5 it will display false so just see how i am displaying it i am putting the string then i am using comma and i am using the variable name so this means i am attaching two things one is this string static string and this is the variable x1 i am attaching with a comma generally comma is not the way to attach two things in javascript generally we attach these two things with a plus sign so i can say x1 is plus variable name but console.log is a special place where we put comma otherwise concatenation that is mixing of the two things can be done using the plus sign so whenever you want to attach two things we will use plus sign if i use plus sign i can attach one string with the another string or one string with the variable name so here in the console.log we can use the comma sign otherwise everywhere we have to use the plus sign so now let's run this page and see what is displaying in the console.log Okay. 
is it open? Okay, let me go to the tools. And in the tools, I will be able to see the console.log. So in the first case, x1 is coming as 10 because I have given the value of 10 to the x1. Second case is giving x2 equal to 3. Third case giving is x3 equal to 1.5. So these are the three cases which we which we use in our JavaScript console.log. So what we did today in the JavaScript, we did about variables. We did about a lot. Yeah, question ask. Yes. Uh, one question. Yeah. What about uh, if we console log uh, x6, the new, you assign new to the. No, no, no. Yeah. So if I say x uh, console dot of, of x6, uh, it will don't display anything because it is null. It will be empty. Empty. Yeah. So it will not uh, be displayed. So I will show you what is coming x6. So it will not show anything. Uh, we did prompt, we did variables, we did alert, and what we did console.log. I'll show you. Huh? Let me let me refresh it. So X is saying null. Yeah, it is displaying null here, but actually its value is empty. So for the sake of purpose display, it is displaying null, but it is not a value. If you say, if you check it, what is the, if X is, X6 is true or false, it will come as a false because it does not have any value. So we, okay. when we will do if condition, we will see if x6, that means if x6 has, x6 has any value, then show something, otherwise don't show. So when we do if as condition, we will see this is null means nothing. It will not, dis, it is uh, empty kind of thing. It It is not present in the variable. Variable is created with uh, some empty content. It does not have real value. Okay. Okay, so just remember what we did today in JavaScript, variables, alert, confirm, prompt, console. I'm going little fast kind of thing. Uh, maybe sometimes if you don't understand, ask me to slow down kind of thing. I will slow down, but these are very simple topics. That's why I'm going little fast on it. And I have only 15 minutes to do the JavaScript. It, it, is, it will be very useful in the future when after one month we will be doing you know, in one day you will see, oh, I did only CSS a little bit. I did JavaScript only a little bit. But uh, small, small things may, will make your mind completely build up with all web development. If I do only CSS, then you will be lost. PHP, when we'll do PHP, when we'll do the live project. So that's the reason I will do small, small things, one word or two, two topics per day for each one. And this way you have complete knowledge of front end and back end, both kind of thing. So let's move to the back end kind of thing. We are done with the JavaScript today. JavaScript in the back end, we will be doing PHP and MySQL. So, uh, PHP is very similar to the JavaScript. So, if I teach you PHP, if I teach you JavaScript, you will see both have many similarities. 90% of the portion is same in the JavaScript and the PHP. So, today uh, we will do first MySQL because the live project which I will be doing today is related to the MySQL. So let's do a little bit of MySQL today and then we'll jump to the live project. So if you have installed my software, which I gave you in the chat, that is called as Dreamweaver and the Apache Friends. So in the Apache Friends, we will be doing the MySQL part. So right now, I will be logging in with another computer because mysql i will be teaching from the windows machine so this is my mac machine i will open the windows machine and i will show you the mysql from the windows machine so give me one minute i will uh, log in with the windows machine
So okay. can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I am on now Windows, Windows machine. And let me open the MySQL. So I have installed the XAMPP which I gave in the chat in the Windows machine. And we will do first MySQL part and then we will start with our first live project. And I will be showing you how to do the live projects. Live projects we will be doing with a different way. We can go with the PHP, we can go with the React JS, or we can go with Angular JS. So we have different ways to go in the live projects. So let's first start with the uh, with the MySQL. When I install XAMPP, I can go to the local host and I can go to the PHP my admin, and I will be able to see. I will be able to see my database kind of thing. So this is the screen which I see when I go to the localhost PHP my admin. So when you install your this Apache software, try to go to the localhost PHP my admin and you will be able to see this screen. If you are on the MAMP or WAMP, uh, you need to figure out whether it's a port of 8001 or 881 so every software has different ports so basically you have to check your port which port you uh, you can uh, use it in your opening the php my admin if you install the xampp which i gave in the chat then you can use directly localhost php my admin in my mac it is different port in my windows it is different port so right now if i open in the windows it is this port uh, that is the default port 80 port and I can directly use the localhost PHP my admin. Now this is the MySQL interface. So everything which I want to do in the MySQL, I can give, get, I can do with this interface. There are command line tools also which we can use in the MySQL, which we will learn in the latter part of the course. Before that, we will learn the user interface, and we will be trying to do everything user using the user interface. But after a couple of months, I will show you how to do everything through the command line also. So whatever I am doing right now in this screen, I can do through command line also. But command line generally people don't prefer because when you go for a professional job, you have to do things very fast. You don't do command line. But if you want to manage high servers, people generally do command line. So let's try to do first in the user interface thing, and then we'll try to go with the command line also. So the first thing step in doing the MySQL is they go to the user account. If I go to the user account, there are a couple of more users here which I deleted it. Because if I don't delete it, I was not able to access the MySQL. So maybe uh, I, I cannot bring it back to show you. But if you install it and if you get problem, just uh, let me know on Monday. Then I will show you how to delete, which user to delete. So just remember these users are default created and two more were created, which I deleted. I don't need those two. So the first thing I can see, this is the root user. And I can use I can use the host of local host. And password is no. That means I don't need any password for this root user. So I will just remember that I can use root. I can use the host, uh, local host as a host and there is a no password for it. That means I can use the root directly without any password. If you want to create your user, you can add user account and create your user with different name. Right now, I will not put much time in use, creating the user account, but if you want to create your new user, you can create your user and you can give the password and you can do whatever you want. But right now, I am okay with this root user and with the host of local host. So this host is required to connect to the database. Database is the place where we keep all the data. If you open the Facebook, you have so many data. People are typing something. People are putting in the descriptions. People are doing many things in the uh, Facebook application. So where all these things go, this all this data is, goes into the database. Maybe they are not using MySQL database, but they might be using some kind of database. We will be using MySQL because PHP is very good with the MySQL and we will try to use the MySQL in our applications. So let's start with uh, 
uh, let's start with the database. So before you start your application, you have to define the database. So every application has at least one database and there can be many tables in that databases. So let's say if I'm making Facebook application, I need only one database to make the Facebook application. But I will be having many tables in it, which I will show you what are the tables are there in a couple of minutes. If I'm making, let's say, for example, job website. For job website also, we, we use one database. So whatever application we will make, we will make one database for each application. So let's create first, uh, let's create our first database. I will name it anything, for example, day one. And in this day one, collation. So just don't, rem uh, don't remember about collation right now. Just select whatever I'm doing it. I will, I will tell you what exactly is collation after some time. Right now, don't worry about collation. Just select UTF general CI. So you have to select this one in the collation. And don't worry about what is exactly collation. I will explain this collation after you will be familiar with uh, database. Little bit uh, you are familiar with the database. There are, there are other forms of uh, collation. You will see there is a Latin Swedish. You have UTF-8 general and you have UTF-8 bin. So there are different type of collation. So generally in our application, whenever we make our website, we use UTF-8 general CI. I always use this kind of collation and you should also use it, this type of collation. Don't worry about what is exactly. I will explain you in detail about what is UTF-8 general or what are the other things. So right now I will create a database of UTF-8 general and I say create. So database will be created with the day one. So this is, let's say my application is called day one. And here in the day one, I will be creating multiple tables. So it's saying here create table. So every database has many tables in it. For example, if you have a jobs website, so there will be one table for posting the job. That is uh, one person will come. Okay, I need a PHP engineer. So second, second table will be user. User will come, they will upload their resume. They will upload their profile. So that is the second table. Third table will be login table. User can log in in the website. So we need, need third table for the login. So this way, multiple tables are created in the uh, in this database. So for one application, we can have many tables. Sometimes there are thousands of tables in one database, depending upon the application. For example, if I want to make a Facebook lab like website, I need the table for the all users. I need the table for the comments. I need the table for the post. I need table for the images. I need table for the videos. I need table for the profile pictures. I need table for the groups. So we can create multiple tables if I want to build a Facebook like website. So let's try to create one dummy table. This is the first table and I will just build a sample table today. So for example, I can say, I can say uh, my table name will be, for example, um, first table, I will say first table. Because this is my first table. Now, how many columns you want in the table? So for example, if I'm making the Facebook like website, let's open the Facebook. So let's say I'm making the Facebook like application, I want to sign up. So what are the fields I need? I need the first name. So I will just give the columns, how many columns I need. For example, in the initial, I'll just give 20. Though I will not be making 20 columns, just I give 20 so that I can add as many table columns as I want. So I will say go, once I click go, it will go to the next page. Okay, now here we have to define what are the columns we need. So we saw in the Facebook, we have the first name. So let me put the first name. I am keeping the first row empty because I will be creating something in the first row. In the second row, I'm putting the first name because Facebook wants to put the first name. I'll say Varkar. Now here there are different types of data types are there. So there are many data types which we can use. In practical, we don't use all the data types. We use only few data types which I will show you. So if you want to put any text, 
which is about uh, uh, 200 to 500 characters. So just uh, use the varkar. So I will be using first name as a varkar and I will give the length, how many characters I, I want to put. So maximum characters I want to put is 50 because I know no one is a person in the world having greater than 50 letters in the first name. So I give some default 50 number and I will say here null equal to checkbox true. Null means if user don't put anything, I am okay with it. If I uncheck it, that means user has to put the first name forcefully in the table. Otherwise, it will give error. But right now, I will I am making it as null. Though I want user to put his, put the name compulsory. I don't want this field to be blank. But in the database, I am making it null allowable. That means user can empty it also. Then also, we can insert the record in the database. But in real life, we will not allow anyone without the first name. That I will show you how to do in the coding. We will not do it in the database level. We will do that in the coding level. So in the database level, we created the first name because Facebook wants the first name in the first field. Second field is the last name. So I will create another column as called as last name. And I will give the varkar of 50. And I will say null allowable. What is the third field I want? It's a mobile number or email. I don't want to use a mobile number right now. I just want email for my case. So this is, I'm not making exactly same as the Facebook, but I'm making uh, some form. I want to take the data for the user. So I'm putting some form. So I put a varkar for the email and I will put some characters. So maximum email which people put generally is 150. So I put the email as 150 characters. And if I see what is Facebook asking, it's asking the password. So I want to put the password field also. So I will say password. And one second. Yeah, I will say password and password will be also varkar. And I will put the 50 character in the length. So that user can enter maximum of 50 characters in the password, though we will not allow so many characters in the, uh, you know, in the PHP, we will restrict it, but let's put it here as a 50 number for the password. What else we need? We need birth date. So it is month, day and year. So we can also ask, so it's up to us. We will only ask uh, date of birth. We will not put month, day, and year separate. We say date of birth, tell your date of birth. So we will say varkar and we'll give the 50 number for the database, uh, for the date of birth. And I will make the null uh, true. That is, we, if user don't put anything, then also we are fine. What else we need? We need gender, male and female. So I can say gender. So for the gender, I can choose, I can choose enum field in the MySQL. Now, what does enum does? Enum uh, says that we have to predefine the values for the gender. So I can say predefine as male, comma, female in the single quotation or double quotation. So either user can put the male or user can put the female. If user put any third thing, let's say, for example, if user put uh, B mail or C mail or D mail, then it will be not entered into this field. So enum, in the enum, we have to specifically say which name we want to put in the gender. So I say only I need female or male. I don't need any third party or any other thing in the gender field. So I will also make this as a null allowable. That means if don't, user don't put anything, I'm okay with it. So Facebook does not have any more thing, but we will be putting more things for learning purpose. I will say description. Okay, that is describe yourself. So I will be putting more fields in it. Description. And I will put the text here. So if I want a big text, let's say 10 pages of the document 
or 20 pages of the document or 100 pages of the document then it is better to take the te text field uh, text type we cannot take varkar if the number of characters are too much too bigger so let's say if user want to describe himself in 10 pages then varkar will not be sufficient varkar does not allow so many characters to be entered into the database so for that case we have to take the text in the date of birth we can also take the date rather than taking the varkar we will say date so date, date does not need this length or value in it so for the date of birth we will say date for description we will say text let's add some more fields in it maybe i can say marital status and i can put worker in it and i can say 50 what is your marital status some are divorced some are some are divorced some are uh, separated some are widow some are single so we have different kind of marital status so we can put marital status in the field let's put some more fields in it i can say created on so when the user created the record so i said created on so for the created on i will use another data type and that data type is called timestamp the advantage of timestamp is we don't want we we don't need to insert it from the PHP. It will automatically enter into the database table if I choose current timestamp. So whenever the record is created, the timestamp will automatically insert it into the row. So we don't need we don't need to pass that. Oh, user came at 10 o'clock on this day. That means uh, we should enter that time. Uh, we, we don't have to worry about that thing it will automatically enter the time whenever the user register the record so this is called created on and we created a timestamp so it has advantage of putting the current timestamp with the current timestamp i can it, it is automatically inserted into the record whenever the user register the uh, whenever you register in our website so these are the fields I want. One more field I want that is called ID. So this ID or user ID, this user ID will be the unique ID for each user. And it will be having of the, uh, you know, I can choose int or I can choose big int for it. If I have too many users, I will choose big int. But if I have less users, I will choose int. And for the end, I can give the value of 11. So we have to give the value of 11 characters to the user ID. And in the user ID, I have to select that this is the primary key. Primary key means this is a unique key and it will be separate for each user. So no two user, no two user will be having same user ID. So user ID will be unique for each user so how to make it unique there is an ai column ai means auto increment auto increment if i check this auto increment column that means whenever the first record will be inserted it will be having the value of one whenever second record will be inserted it will be having the value of two so this will automatically increasing whenever the new user will come so this is needed because uh, if I want to delete some user, so it is easy to delete from this user ID column. You know, first name can be same for many users, so I cannot delete based on the first name. Email is also the field which we can use, but user ID is most optimum to use and it is auto increment and we can delete it based on the user ID. If I want to delete it or if I want to manipulate the record, it is better to create one primary key which is numeric and which is auto increment so whenever i create a table i create the first column as id and i give the auto increment of true and i give the primary true to that field so just remember that for every table which you create you have to give the primary key of user id or you can say id or whatever you want to give give the name for this case, I will give the user ID 
and I will give the primary index and I give the auto increment true. That means every new record which we insert will get a new ID. So first record will get one, second record will get two, third record will get three, fourth record will get four, fifth record will get five. So this way increment will be there. So let's we we are done with the creating the table. We have to click the go. So what we saw today, we saw the Facebook has these forms and we created similar kind of form in our database and we added some more fields to understand how the database work and we also created the primary key that is called the user id which is primary and auto incremented auto incremented means it increases every time the new user comes to our page now i will click the go or save button and my uh, table will be created now before i say go or save button it is asking the storage engine. Right now it's showing InnoDB and there are different types of storage engine. I will talk in detail about this storage engine. Uh, today is not the right time to talk about the storage engine because you don't know much about MySQL database. So right now I will make it InnoDB only as a default and I will click the save. Once I click save, Okay, once I click save, the table is created and this table is called first table. And if I click the structure, I can see the structure of the table that it has a user ID, it has a first name, last name, email, password, date of birth, gender, description, marital status created on. We can see the data type of integer, we can see the data type of varkar, varkar, email, Worker, password, worker, date of birth, date, gender is enum with male and female, description is a text, marital status is a worker, created on is a timestamp. So these are the fields which we created for the first table. Maybe if I create a job website, the fields will be different. If I, call, if I create dating website, my fields will be different. If I create groups, my fields will be different. So based on your requirement, you have to create your fields and you will be putting data in these fields so that it is saved in your database and you can show it whenever you want to the user. So what we did in the last uh, session, we took a little more time for the MySQL. The reason is, uh, the reason is this MySQL is also the live project which we will be doing. That's the reason I did both together. So what we started with PHP and MySQL, we started with the MySQL creating a database and we started with the creating a table and we created our first table with different fields and Actually, I merged my the live project part into this one because in my live project, which I was going to explain, the first live project which we will be going through is called the basics, where we will learn how to create a website in PHP and MySQL using Dreamweaver. So this is the topic of the my live web live project. We will be learning the basics of how to create a complete website in PHP and MySQL using Dreamweaver. So there are two parts of this. First part is we will use drag and drop method to create complete website. So we will not write a code. We will write little bit of code, but mostly it will be drag and drop feature, complete website. And once the complete website is built, then, okay, so the first part is we will be creating a complete website using drag and drop feature of Dreamweaver. Second part will be, we will go through the complete website and try to learn how Dreamweaver created the website. So here we will go inside the code 
and see how Dreamweaver has created the complete website. We will learn from Dreamweaver. Let's say we don't know. Dreamweaver is our teacher. Dreamweaver will show us how to create a complete website in PHP MySQL using drag and drop. So we will be creating using drag and drop, but ultimately aim is to learn the coding. So once we are, once our site is created, we will go inside each page and we will try to learn what Dreamweaver has created and then we will try to learn how to code without writing the Dreamweaver, without using the Dreamweaver. So ultimate aim is not to use the Dreamweaver, write our own code, but to write our own code, we should know the way, we should know the right way to do the things. So Dreamweaver will teach us the right way to do the things. So what we did today, we created a table. Tomorrow we will see how to use this table, not tomorrow, on Monday, how to use this table and use it in Dreamweaver to create a website. So we will be creating a form like this and we will be inserting the records in the form and we will go further into, you know, more into the creating the website. So live pro first live projects is the basics in PHP and MySQL. And we will be building the complete website using Dreamweaver and then we will go through the code and see how the Dreamweaver created the website. And once Dreamweaver creates a complete website, we will understand how to write the PHP code and create a website. So this happens, you know, sometimes you want to make your website very quickly in one day or two days. So you can use the drag and drop method of Dreamweaver and create a complete website. And then when you have time, you can go through the code and try to understand how Dreamweaver created the website and then you can use similar feature in your uh, understanding to know more about how to create a website in PHP and MySQL. So this is about the live project which we will be doing in a few days from today. And once we are done with this, we will go further. I will explain you what I'm going to do after that. Now, any questions on this database? Any question on creating a table database, any doubts you have or anything which you have not understood, you, I will give you the recordings which you go through after this uh, session and try to understand again and again what I taught you and try to do same thing what I taught you. If you cannot open this localhost PHP admin, just let me know in on Monday, then I will show you how to do it in your machine. I will come to your machine as a presenter and I will show you in your computer how to do the things. So for today, I want to know if you have understood this or you have some difficulty in understanding. Uh, yes, I understand. Uh, I just uh, come across the uh, problem that uh, when I go the local host, it didn't show up. But later after the class, I will try it again. And if I cannot fix it, I will uh, go get some help on Monday. Okay, so now next thing which I want to show you, if you go join.me, you should download the join.me app. Have you downloaded the app or you are going through the browser? The browser. Okay, if you download the app, then I can give you the presenter role and I can see your screen. Oh, then you can okay. show me your screen and I will fix the problem in your screen. So okay. try to download the join.me app. I will give you the URL. I think uh, I think what you have to do. Okay, I will show you how to do download the app. Let me give you the uh, let me give you the uh, let me give you the presenter role and then it will give allow uh, it will give you the option to download one second mm -hmm. so first i will first i will give my first i will give presenter role to kate so you might be getting something uh, maybe download kind of I thing downloaded the app. yeah yeah download the app now okay yeah, already okay. downloading. Yeah, downloading. So let me give now the presenter role to carry so that you can also get the download link. So did you get the download link, Carrie? Me? Yeah. I 
I already get the application downloaded. Okay, you know, I am Carrie. There is a Carrie, not your cat. Yes, Kate. I got it. Um, yeah, just um, download it. Yeah, down download it. But when when you were asking, can you send? Wait, do you want to keep doing me? Can I uh, send you again the link? Uh, actually, I think it works and it's downloading. Okay, if it's downloading, it's okay. Then install it. Once you install, then if I give you the presenter role, then I can see your screen. And if you have any problem, I can, you know, I can type it in your screen or I can fix the problem in your computer. Okay. Okay, just download it. Let's see if I can, uh, if I can see your uh, screen. So once you're downloaded, install it and let me know. So just let me know if you completed your install. Is it installed? Hello? Yeah. yeah. Is it installed? Uh, no. Okay. So maybe if you click the link now, which I am giving in chat, it will open in the join uh, in the join dot me app rather than in the browser. So I think try to click now this link. It will open in the app if you have installed it. Carrie? Carrie, did you download it? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. now I can hear you. Sorry, I had you on I, mute. I am back. Okay, we, uh, are you in join.me? Yeah. Okay, I will give now presenter role to Kate. Let's see if we can see your screen. Can you take the presenter? Can you accept the presenter role? Yeah, launching launching the join me desktop app. Yeah, it, you already down download, right? You are in yeah, the yeah already. Uh, but are you in the join dot me app or on the browser? Uh, the browser. Browser. So that's the reason it's not allowing. So just close the browser and open the join dot me uh, join dot me application or software. Then mm -hmm. you will be able to get the presenter role. Oh, okay. Try it, try it. Okay, let me let me close it. I, I see. Browser. Okay, I see you again. Let me give you again. Let's see if you can get it now. Okay. Can you see accept? Can you see accept somewhere? 
Uh, there is a there shows launching the join me desktop application. Okay, let's give uh, uh, let's think, yeah. let, now try now see. Okay, maybe you need to close one browser and then try. Just close the browser and open okay. the. Open the. Carrie, okay. are you able to see the presenter role? Um, oh yeah. Would you like to present? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I am able to see your desktop. You can see yeah. my computer. Just move your mouse. Okay. Let me let me see. Yeah. Yeah. I am able to. Yeah. You are moving your mouse, right? But why? Why it's happening like this? It's yeah. It's getting really uh, pixelated. Why is that? One second. Maybe, maybe you are opening the two things. Close the browser, maybe. That's the reason it may be because close the browser. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Close, close your browser. Close the browser. Yeah. Then I will give you again. Just close your browser. Let me. Yeah. Now, you are, now, now take the presenter role. Now share the screen. Yeah, Hello, now we yes, can. I'm now I am in the application. Okay, okay. I, I I'll give you this. Now we can see your screen. You can see so, my screen? Not your carry screen. This is carry screen. Oh, okay. So just click uh, something first, carry, just click first. Which which uh, just click Drupal 8 or anything, carry. I want to see whether we are able to really see. Just click anything. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can see your browser or desktop also. Okay, let's let's give the yeah, let's give the presenter role to Kate. Now Kate. Mm -hmm. Okay, one second. Let me give you the presenter role. Can you see accept? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just click accept. Yeah, now we are able to see your screen. Now show me where is the problem, what your problem you're getting. Oh, my screen? Oh, see this one? No, uh, the previous one, where was the previous one? Which was the browser Which previous one? one? Local host PHP, my admin, and uh, I cannot, it doesn't show anything. Okay. Right now okay. you see my screen, right? Right. I, I want mouse control. Give me the mouse control. It may be yeah, allow. Okay, so let's see. Let's see here. Okay, so we need to start this MySQL. So if you see Apache is started, mm -hmm. but MySQL is not started. So let's start uh, MySQL. Mm -hmm. And then I click the admin. Okay, something is problem with your access denied for root at local host. Mm -hmm. Connection for control defined phase. Okay, so problem is with your, uh, uh, you know, in the config. Okay, so I need to. I need to go into <coughs> mm. It's not of me.
is it hanged or what? I am not able to open it. Is it hanged? Can you open the folder? Uh, let me see. Yeah. Ram, yeah, the folder where I saw that files config one. Can you open this folder? Yeah, I so will just cancel it. This one. Okay, I want to open this one. Yeah, this one can you open this one. Uh, open this one. Yeah. Okay, let's open in some other file. Let's open with the uh, bracket. bracket. Yeah, let's open in bracket. So there is some configuration problem. That's the reason we are not able to see it. Okay. So this control user is a problem. Hmm. <coughs> okay, give me one second. Uh, so what should be used? One second, let me see. Yeah, I am reading the documentation. What is the right thing to do? One second. So, basic settings is uh, so I can click the plain old version of the second cookie. Maybe because I installed it before, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I we need to fix that anyhow. I don't need to log in. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to log in with the root machine. It is uh, now very good browser. Okay, still is giving error, right? Uh, PHP uh, access generate for using PMA at local host. So I think. Uh, Yeah, we need to remove this. Uh, why, why not? Uh, I'll go through this configuration document, and mm -hmm. I'll see. Uh, I'll see what is the right thing, and I will email you the settings. So I know these settings to be changed. I I was getting same problem few years back. So we need to change the settings here somehow. So I will okay. check. I will check the. Uh, you know, uh, I will check the proper settings uh -huh. and I will tell you the I will email you those settings okay do I need to uninstall it and try install it again I think. Uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe if uh, you know if we cannot fix it then we need to reinstall it again but I was mm -hmm. trying to fix it because I, I fixed this sometime I was also getting you know, 15 years back when I said PSP, I was getting this problem frequently. So mm -hmm. I, I used to fix this here somehow. Allow no password to, okay, let's see. I, I just play with, uh, you know, this settings and one of the settings. We need to 
save the, the file first? Save yeah, it. I saved it. Is it saved or no? No, no saving. Oh. File, save. Okay, Go save it. Yeah. You do, you do it, save, file, save. Oh, okay, let me see. File, uh, save all, right? Save all. Save all, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's try now. Yeah, okay. I, I, I will find out the proper settings and I will let you know. Sure. Uh, maybe on Monday I will email or otherwise. Sure. If I don't, uh, if I we cannot fix it, then we need to reinstall. Maybe some settings got overwritten and we need to uh, keep visit and pass config. Make sure that some from the administration of the administration server. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember the settings because I did this long back. Sure, I can wait him for our email. Yeah, I will find the best thing and then we'll do that. Okay, so right now I, I'll take your thing and I will email you. I will email you the proper, you know, proper uh, configuration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 